Hello, I'm David, and I want to show you something on Duna. I have been playing a lot with rovers in Duna with different styles, and they keep crashing from one set to another. Also, most typical rovers they are just too slow. Basically, it takes hours and hours to get to from one place to another, and they are just not reliable for that. And planes! Let's talk about planes. Planes are good, but they have a very high speed for landing, and then anything in Duna is bumpy to land. And then we have the basic rockets. Rockets are simple but you have to keep refueling them or just you run out of well and of course and you just in crashing in the middle of nowhere without any hope of retrieving it later so i wanted something something that is better in every possible sense something that doesn't require so much refueling something that is easy to land something that can fly and go relatively fast and then i bumped into autogyros autogyros are a bit complex to build at the beginning because they are not something that we are familiar with but autogyros have a lot of advantages uh, on top of airplanes helicopters or regular ground rovers so you may be asking what makes an autogyro better than say a plane, uh, an helicopter or a ground rover. Well, compared to an helicopter or a plane, an autogyro is definitely easier to fly than a, an helicopter and also easier to fly than a plane. Compared to a ground rover, it's way way faster, it's also as fast as a plane. It also doesn't require much energy to sustain the fly, it can fly for hours or indefinitely depending on the amount of energy that you're carrying it, but it's really convenient and they have excellent manner variability so they can turn around very easily that's compared to a plane and especially in Duna where you don't have much atmosphere and they are very easy to maneuver so let me explain what an autogyro is because it's quite confusing for much people because it's something that is not really known and most of us never saw flying an autogyro where everyone is comfortable seeing or used used to seeing uh, planes and helicopters flying around so an autogyro is not an helicopter it's not a plane it's kind of half and half. It has propellers, uh, usually on back, in my case they are on front, that are providing the forward thrust, and they have a rotor on top with blades, like an helicopter, but with the main difference that they are not powered. Um, this top rotor um, is turning because the uh, inward flow of air is making the blades turn, and this is production lift, and uh, this turn, this effect of turning, the turn itself also produces lift. It's quite strange. The autogyro doesn't have wings to provide lift, the, all, all the lift it comes from the rotor. It only has control surfaces to provide authority, but those control surfaces, they don't provide much lift you know, on their own, all the lift is coming from the rotor as I said before. So, in order to build an autogyro in KSP, we need to do some tweaks from what is in real life, because KSP is not going to like a few of those things. So, for example, in real life, the blades on top, they tend to have some weird spin, so want to counteract uh, some gyroscopic effect that could be done in KSP, but it's going to be really unstable. So, instead, uh, adding a double set of rotors that turn in opposite directions, that's much easier and much reliable to work in KSP. Another thing that I like to do is having a small motor on the rotor uh, just to keep it turning at the start basically because uh, it starts providing a um, amount of, of lift and reduces the time required to get the rotors started and it's much more convenient to use. The blades on top those usually wait a lot compared to their uh, rotor and this causes KSP to fail in the physics engine uh, uh, causing the Kraken to get angry at us and uh, it gets quite crazy. So what I usually do is adding uh, a series of struts circularly to avoid this from happening, just stabilizing the blades. I like adding a bit of angle into the blades. This improves the takeoff, hovering and landing speeds. Okay, with this out of the way, let me show you how this thing flies. As you can see, it takes off quite easily and it has quite good maneuvering speed. It has also very good high speed, but it takes quite a lot of time to get there, but eventually gets there and is around 120 meters second and it's quite fast. It's almost as fast as an airplane that's running out on propellers. The autogyros, similar as planes, they can re-enter Duna without any help from rockets or parachutes, but it's even faster and easier than uh, with planes. Planes are a bit risky to enter Duna as they are, but the uh, lifting effect of the blades in the autogyro, the 
mega uh, grid parachute by their own. It is a bit unstable because it's coming from a lot of speed and it takes a bit of time to normalize it, but eventually it gets there and it's really flyable after that. Finally, what I want to show you is a full mission from Kerbin to Duna with all the transfer orbit because, well, one of the problems here is how to strap this thing into a proper rocket and launch it into orbit. It's not that difficult, uh, it takes a bit of experience. Basically, what I like to do is to put a small thing in the middle, um, bar, and then cover the whole thing with a fairing. It gets a bit complicated because the fairing barely fits the blades. But once that is done, the rest is quite easy. Just a bunch of tanks below and using a big engines and a lot of boosters. But that's it, nothing complicated. The time frames are there just to make sure that the uh, aerodynamic center is behind the center of mass because there is a lot of surface area on front and we need to make sure that it's not going to become unstable on flight. And never forget to put a ton of struts from the main rocket into the uh, auto gyro because if not it's going to be a little wobble inside. The launch went quite well, as expected, and no problems at all. I was a bit worried about the amount of Delta V. The transfer orbit of Duna is a bit quite a hit and miss. Um, just wait more or less for Duna to be uh, behind Kerbin for, I don't know, maybe 15 to 30 degrees. I don't know exactly the maths there. And just plan maneuver node and try to find the capture node in Duna. Because both planets are in the same orbit, the same plane, it's usually straightforward to find the, the capture node. Once the aircraft leaves the Kerbin sphere of influence and enters the Sun one, then it's moment to verify that it's getting into the right position and uh, it's also time to get some minor adjustments. This is the best time because it takes the less amount of delta V to do those kind of adjustments. And after that, just wait for getting there. Once in Duna, it's just taking a big orbit bar, trying to circularize more or less. Usually it's okay if we enter a bit the atmosphere, um, we are not going to burn at these speeds. This is not real life. And then I use this time to burn the extra fuel to make the descent easier. Once we reach an altitude of about 20 kilometers, I start the rotors and everything and uh, beginning the brake phase of the aircraft. This is the part where it becomes a bit unstable, but as you can see, it's not that bad. It's flying nice. Just remember to keep an eye on the airspeed and the inclination and don't pull up too much because if you pull up too much in an autogyro, you will stall it. And this is it. We landed. I think this is a great success and uh, for me this is the best rover all around for Duna. Hope you like it. Subscribe for more crazy experiments like this in KSP.